Hi guys, welcome back. Thanks for checking in with us. Dave here at Gurdens. Today we're gonna to be going over some questions that are coming in uh, with the spring season. Questions are starting to fly in. And uh, we're gonna be going over some yard cleanup and we're also gonna tackle some preventative maintenance tasks that you should be doing and some things that you should not be doing. So with that, all these questions, we're gonna just jump right to it. So go ahead. Um, do you wanna give us a intro to yard cleaning? What, what should people be looking for this time of year? You bet. So, you know, there's the general, you know, uh, so the, the funny talk around the water cooler right now is if you are a dog owner, uh, the, the talk is, you know, it's like a jail sentence. So um, when are you going to go out and do your yard? You know, when are you going to pick up? And, uh, you know, uh, I heard a couple people say, you know, yeah, I'm doing it this weekend and their heads kind of hang down because they know they have to do it. But uh, the, that's kind of the, the, the biggest thing on people's list is, is uh, dog pickup. Um, and then just, you know, uh, See to know, you know, yard debris and lawn debris, things like that. Um, we can start thinking about it. We do want to slow down a little bit. Um, I always cringe when I see people out there raking and getting into it too much, but uh, uh, this is the time of year. So just from a general scope, that's kind of where we're at. It's time to start thinking about it. Speaking of dogs, if dogs are leaving spots in someone's yard, is there any way to prevent that or take care of that? You bet, you bet. So uh, the question is, you know, uh, will dogs, is there any way to kind of prevent the dog damage that's done there? Uh, yes. So. Uh, don't worry about it, your grass will bounce back. Um, there's a couple, one product that you can use is called gypsum, that's this white bag down here. And that is a calcium sulfate, it's a trace mineral, so um, it's going to just kind of help neutralize the salt in the urine and kind of move those salts through the soil. Uh, I will say this, water is your best line of defense with dog damage. Uh, watering, water, water, water is your, your best line of defense with that. Um, and then follow it up with that gypsum product. Um, if you do have severe burn, um, you're going to have to d rake that out and then do some reseeding here in the spring once the soil temperatures warm up. Not yet. That's not for a while. Um, for raking, is there a timeline for that when people should and shouldn't? You bet. So the question is, when should you be raking here in Minnesota? Uh, the short answer is late April, early May, somewhere in there. Um, it's different for everybody's yard just because Soil temperatures kind of fluctuate. Um, some people have more tree cover in their yard than others. Um, so this all makes a difference. But generally speaking, we're a ways away from raking. Do not do it. Just you know, try to hold off. I know we all have the, the itch to get out there and get to it. Um, uh, my yard, my personal yard, uh, we have a lot of tree cover. So I'm, I'm like a long ways away, well over a month away. Um, but there's two instances where you could probably get away with a little bit of raking. One is if you have high exposure, a big open area where the sun has dried everything up and you also have a good turf, a good base sod carpet. Um, in those cases, you can get in there. I wouldn't get too vigorous with your raking, but you can certainly get out some of that dead thatch. The other instance is, um, is, is, is if you have uh, snow mold kind of a buildup. There, it's not necessarily vigorous raking, just more breaking up of that, that snow mold. So if you have that, you can get away with a little bit. So if people are waiting to rake their yards, would now be a good time to prune trees and shrubs? Yeah, so the question is, uh, can you prune right now uh, your shrubs and trees? Um, that's a great question. The answer is yes. It's a great time for most varieties of shrubs and trees to do your pruning. Um, don't do more than a third. If you do it earlier rather than later, so don't wait too long on this, then you'll have time uh, within, before the new growth comes and you can kind of hide your mistakes if there's little pockets or holes in the shrub. Um, and with pruning, um, try not to do more than a third. Um, the exception to that, I wouldn't do any pruning on, on oak. Oak, you can get oak wilt disease, and so it's more susceptible um, when, when you fungal issues and insects. So that's the one I would probably wait. I think the university says you can prune between November and uh, the end of March, but with this nice weather we're having, I would probably just hold off on your oak. But everything else is kind of fair game, including your fruiting trees. Um, Aaron from Facebook asked a little bit more about raking. Why would you not want to rake right now? You bet. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, so the question is, why would you not want to rake right now? So you can actually do more damage to the lawn than good. Um, yes, you're pulling out some dead thatch, some some debris from last fall that blew in. Uh, but what you're actually doing is you're 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 damaging the blade. You're kind of forcing the the, the rake through it. Um, and when I th 
think of this, I'm, I'm thinking of a metal uh, tined rake, something like this one down here. Um, not so much a leaf rake. A leaf rake you can probably get away with a little bit, but you're also not going to get a lot of dead thatch out with a leaf rake, whereas this rake you could probably pull out more. But anyway, um, what you're actually doing is you're kind of scraping that lawn blade and you want to let it recover. It's kind of like a human taking a nap. Let it kind of ease into it. Let it drink its coffee, kind of wake up. So don't just start hitting it full bore with uh, uh, aggressive raking. Another question from Facebook. When can I unwrap tree trunks? You bet. So as the temperatures start to warm up, you can start unwrapping those. Um, I would wait till the end of March here. Um, April 1st is a great time to start unwrapping those. Um, let the elements kind of get to them. Um, let it kind of soak up all that energy. Um, that's also can be said for your wrapped evergreens with burlap. Those can come off now and you can start letting them wake up. Um, let the sun get to them and uh, it'll help the color kind of kick in. So um, yeah, it's a good time to do it. Um, some people worry about sun scald and, and blisters and things like that. That's nature, that happens. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Uh, these summer months, it needs to breathe. So uh, then you can go back in the fall and do a new wrap, so yep. When people are unwrapping their trees, do you have any recommendations if they should spray anything on them for trees that are prone to bugs? So the question is, should you be spraying your trees after you wrap them? The, the, the best answer I can give you is yes, you should be spraying your, your trees uh, this time of year with a couple different products. Um, the, this is, I'm speaking about the canopy, not the leaves, they, they come later, but the, the top of the tree, um, not, the, not, the, not the stem of it. Um, you should start with a horticultural dormant oil spray. This is, uh, these are mineral oils derived from nature, so this is an organic spray. The oil is designed to smother insects. Um, suffocate them so that they don't have a chance to hatch and we're talking about mites and aphids and white flies and thrips and mealybugs and all sorts of different uh, in scale this will what this will do is it'll suffocate them and so it won't let them hatch um, this is your first spray and you do that anytime between right now and I would say the first part of April you want to get out there early for this the second spray, and you're going to be doing three sprays, the second spray you jump to a different product. This is going to be more um, uh, like Captan or Melathon or um, some of the pyrethrins that you can find out in nature. That, like pyrethrins are found in the chrysanthemum plant, so th those are uh, natural. Um, this is a spray that you can spray the canopy um, when the buds are swelling. They haven't opened yet, but they're swelling that's a good time to spray with this one and then after the last of the petals have fallen you want to avoid blooms after the last of the petals have fallen that's when you do your third spray and so the answer to your question is yes you should be spraying but you don't have to spray the trunk down you don't have to protect the trunk or anything just let mother nature take its course on that gotcha. on the topic of repellent um, do you have any recommendations for rabbit or deer repellent you for bet. lawn or garden? You bet. So the question is, what kind of repellents can you use for rabbits and deer and those pesky little critters in our yards? Um, so a couple that we do suggest is the... Um, so this one is for vole damage, and we'll, we're going to talk more about this on Friday too, but uh, vole damage is very prominent right now. Um, as, as your snow starts to leave, you'll see all these little channels and tracks in your lawn, um, and those are caused by voles, and that is that little guy there, the little, looks like a brown field mouse, and that's all that is. And those guys, uh, they're, they're vegetarian, they're going to be eating the tops of your roots, uh, tops of your blades of your grass all winter long, and creating those channels. This product is a uh, castor oil pellet. You sprinkle it down, you start on this side of the problem, kind of flush them outwards. So day one, you do a third, day two, do another third, and day three, kind of finish it off, and you're flushing them out of your yard. It's not a killer, it's a repellent. So that's for voles and, and, and moles. And then when you're talking about rabbits and deer, you're looking at this product. This is called Repelzol. This is one of many. We have a, a wall over here of it, and uh, uh, this will do rabbits and, and squirrels and deer and and if you look close even an armadillo because I know we got a lot of those here um, 
And so uh, what this is, is it's dried blood, egg solids, garlic oil. It's a stinky concoction and it just sends a message. We don't want you here. And you can't really overdo this. Um, I do warn people, don't do this right next to your porch. If you're, or if you're having a grad party or something like, just kind of be cognizant of that there is a smell to it, but it does go away. Um, but sprinkle this down and it just kind of sends a message, go away, we don't want you here. And then with that repellent, is there any risk of it freezing if, if Minnesota is still cold? So the question is, uh, can, this, can these products freeze and then and no longer be uh, active and, and, and useful? No, they, they, they work all, all winter long. Um, we do suggest the granular approach versus a liquid. Liquids kind of uh, water down quickly and they don't stick around as long. The slow release granular uh, 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 is a little bit more effective. It, it, it lingers longer, um, it says two and a half months on there. Um, and so that's what I would do. And for people that have, uh, uh, they're worried about the snow covering all this, because I sprinkle it in the fall around the base of my shrubs and trees. And then the snow comes and you're like, well, there goes that. Well, the way around that is sprinkle some in an old sock and hang that up a little, a little higher in the branches. So it's above the snow line and it kind of, it kind of sends a message all winter long, but you will have to replenish. It's, it's an ongoing battle with these guys. So, yep. Um, speaking of snow, you talked a little bit about snow mold. Uh, could you talk more about that? Yeah, so snow mold comes in basically two varieties. There's the, the traditional gray, sometimes white snow mold, um, and then there's the pink. The gray is kind of what most people get, and it's basically because uh, it's, it's the snow cover kind of compressed moisture, um, and it's got nowhere to go, and, and also sometimes people leave their lawn a little too long in the fall. You should really shorten that to, so you're less prone. Um, but that gray snow mold can be easily dealt with. Just rake, take a, a metal rake, something like this, and just kind of break up that, uh, that snow mold and let the air and sunlight get to it and let Mother Nature kind of right the ship on that one. When it comes to the pink one, that one's a little bit more toxic, a little bit more um, serious. So uh, there I would, I, would, I would not attack that one with a rake because you don't want to spread it. And I would use this product here. This is a uh, lawn fungicide. It's called Infuse. And this covers just about every single disease you can think of. Um, and there's, what you do is you sprinkle this down, you do the area plus more because the, the, the disease is kind of a growing area um, and it moves. And so you wanna do that area plus a little bit more. And then after 14 days, you do a second round of it. Um, ideally, you wanna water this in to activate it, but I think mother nature will help with the soggy soil. So yeah, so that's kinda what you do for snow mold. Perfect. Um, and then for a little bit more about raking leaves, do you have a timeline for that, fall or spring? Yeah, so the question is, when should you uh, rake leaves that are kind of in your yard um, that blew in or fell later? Um, so if they are, if you have full leaves in your yard, you do, should get those out of there. Uh, one way to do it is if you have a leaf blower, that's less invasive, you can blow those out. If you don't have that, you can get out there with a, a rake, kind of like a leaf rake and just lightly get them out of there. You gotta let that lawn breathe and, or your garden breathe. So you can start cleaning that up. And um, uh, if you don't, you're gonna run into other problems down the road. And so um, it's in your best interest to get those up off the ground and, and, and cleaned up. Can you explain exactly what a leaf rake is in particular? You bet. So the question is, uh, what you know, what's a leaf rake? So it's gonna be wider tines. A lot of times you see them as bamboo or plastic, they got the wide bristles, wide tines on them, uh, versus a metal tined rake. And this also shouldn't be confused with a garden rake, which is the heavy duty metal tines. But uh, those are kind of the three uh, varieties of rake. So does that kind of answer your question, Terry? Okay. Um, so a new topic, when people are antsy to get outside, do we need to be careful walking on our lawn? Not necessarily. Um, so, sorry, the question is, should we be careful walking on our lawns? Lawns, not so much. Gardens, yes. So, um, when it comes to lawns, um, you can get out there. You can, you should get out there and get out there and uh, start doing your, your, your cleanup and, um, you know, your cleanup Make after. Up yes, yes. <laughs> Clean up after Fido and the sticks and whatnot. Um, when it comes to garden, I would hold off on that because yes, a lot of times the native bees, um, butterfly, butterfly larvae, um, uh, 
ladybugs, none, a number of uh, pol beneficial insects and pollinators are nesting in there all winter long, and that's that, that's their their safe haven all winter long. And if we come through there and just start cleaning it out, well, we're actually taking them out, and we want them so. Drag your feet as long as you can. There's no like date on the calendar when you should do this, but just try to drag it out as long as you can um, so we're not disturbing that. Um, uh, you don't see it happening, but, uh, in, uh, but they're, they're pupating and they're waking up and they're, and they're, and they're hatching, so it's coming. So uh, try to stay out of them as long as you can. Perfect. Do you have any recommendations for fruit trees this time of year? You know, with fruit trees, just definitely d you want to be doing the two sprays, or sorry, the two different products, but three sprays. Um, you definitely want to do that. Um, and that stands for cherry, pear, apple, you name it. Um, all those trees can be, can be sprayed. Other than that, you can do some light pruning. Um, if you do it sooner rather than later, you won't, uh, you won't get in the way of the, the, new, the, the new growth. Um, but yeah, that's, that's about it. Perfect. Um, we have a question from Facebook. Bonnie wants to know, what is the least toxic and most effective way to get rid of buckthorn? You bet. So the question is, how, what's the least uh, toxic way to get r rid of uh, buckthorn? So the, the answer is the suffocating it with plastic bags. You make a cut and then you cover it with a, it's called a green bag. It's an actual product called a green bag. And you cover it with that. That's an organic approach. Then you're not doing any chemicals or, or um, painting or anything like that. Um, that is a uh, non-invasive, um, non-toxic approach. So you kind of suffocate it. You leave these bags on there. I know it's a pain because you're going to be doing many of them. But that's the, probably the best thing. Other people will, will cover it with clear plastic, the whole bed. Uh, not black plastic, but clear plastic. The sun penetrates through. Um, it's called solarization, and it's a slow death. You have to have that plastic on there for, I think it's like 40 days. Um, so it can be an eyesore, but you can try that. Um, most people, I know you don't want to hear this, Bonnie, but most people will do the tricloper. That's the active ingredient in our brush killer, stump killer. And you make a fresh cut, and within about five minutes of making that cut, you paint on this product. And you don't mix up the water, you just go direct. And uh, what that does is it's, uh, it kind of breaks it down and kills it. Um, and uh, we even have a blue dye so you can tell where you've gone. So you can kind of track where you've gone. But uh, yeah, it, not, uh, organic approaches, it's kind of tricky and kind of hard. It's, it's more time consuming. Gotcha. Um, if someone's looking for a new set of pruners, do you have any recommendations? So yeah, the question is, uh, when it comes to pruners, what's what's good? What what kind of what do I recommend? So in the world of pruning, there's two types. There is the bypass, which is kind of like um, a blade that passes through the other blade. It shears it off like a scissors, so it kind of makes a pass. It's called a bypass. Um, and this is something that makes a nice clean cut so you're less prone for disease and insects getting in there. This is uh, what you use on live branches. When it comes to dead, you can use what they call, I got it, uh, an anvil pruner, which is straight. It just basically, I don't know if you can see that, but it's a flat surface. And it's going to mash the branch more than cut it. And you only do this on dead branches. Um, can you use a bypass on a, on a dead branch? Yes, you can, but it's going to dull your blades quicker. So I always suggest using this on the dead, this on the live. So know the difference. Um, if you mash your, mash your branch, you're not doing your, your tree any favors. So yeah, those are the two main ones. And this is, these are loppers. We also have pruners in our uh, pruning aisle. The same can be said about those. Perfect. Do you have any other tool or safety equipment recommendations? You bet. So the question is, do I have any other suggestions or tips uh, or tools? Um, I should actually, before I move on to that, you're going to want to disinfect these blades. If you are, uh, if you're cleaning, if you're, if you're pruning something that has, that's, a, that's sickly, you're cutting off a branch that's, that's decaying, you're going to want to disinfect this with hydrogen peroxide or rubbing alcohol before you go to the next one because uh, uh, trees are just like humans. They can catch a cold and uh, you don't want to spread that bacteria from one to the other. So forgot to mention that. Um, as far as um, products, you know, um, I do like this leaf pop-up bag. This one, this is a lifesaver. They come in different sizes. Um, they're collapsible. And um, the small one I actually use uh, uh, with a plastic bag liner, and I use that for my, I've got two dogs. I use that for cleanup. 
This one here is good for um, uh, leaf pickup and uh, yard waste um, in your garden beds. Um, these are great. They're like a tug. You can just drag them around um, and they work out really well. Some people hoist it into a wagon um, and then just wheel it off to the curb. Um, pooper scoopers. You have to have a set of gloves. I like a nice old uh, leather pair. Um, what else can I show you here? That's about it for, 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 for tools. There's, don't overthink it. You know, a lot of people think I should get this and that. Just keep it old school. Um, you know, garbage bags. Oh, I should mention the um, yard compost bags down here. You can get those pretty much anywhere nowadays. Um, Gurton sells them in a five pack. And I th it's 50 cents if you fill those up. It's 50 cents a bag if you bring it to our compost site. Uh, we do that at, in the Denmark location, the Egan and Invergrove Heights here. Um, it's a biodegradable bag. It's really slick. You just pull up, tell them how many bags you got, and then just kind of throw it in the pile. Um, so that's a nice option also. Perfect. And then if someone wants to learn more about lawn care, is there anywhere they can go? You bet. So the question is, uh, where else can you find out about lawn care? Uh, tips, tricks, just information in general. Go to our website. Um, on there, you'll find different uh, tabs that you know, will lead you to the garden scoop and some other uh, tips and videos and um, uh, um, um, reports that we've done. Um, and then we talk about a little bit of everything on there. So if uh, uh, if that's about it, I think I think we've wrapped up most of our questions. So I'm gonna check out here now. So uh, uh, thanks for checking in with us guys. And uh, if you can see us on Friday, we're going to do another one of these. We're going to be talking about pre-emergence for your lawn, seeding, some things like that. And uh, so that's on Friday. Uh, and so we'll see you then. Thank you.